So the first talk uh, will be by Dr. Lalit Verma, sir, who will be speaking on macular hole with the posterior pole RD, especially in cases of uh, high myopia. Yeah, thank Over you, Srinivas, uh, because once we are uh, doing a VR surgery, sometimes, you know, uh, an undiagnosed macular hole, uh, you know, uh, props up. So thanks to everybody for this. You see, in myopia and detachment, there could be various combinations, uh, which could be a peripheral break, DRT, or peripheral tear, macular hole, shysis. So many things are there with myopia. And classic teaching when, uh, you know, uh, we started is to see the peripheral break and forget everything about it. But today, I think uh, with MIVS, we, uh, you know, go from inside and in such patients which have both, it's the double trouble actually, double trouble patients we, you know, uh, do a VR and peel the ILM and it works very well. So I'll show you only three videos here. This was one patient who, who made me alarmed, who made me alarmed that we had not diagnosed macular hole in this patient. This patient was a myope but had a reg RD but bullous RD and we had seen two, three breaks in the periphery. So macula actually was not visible and the bulla was hanging over the macula. But once I started doing, to my uh, surprise, we saw a macular hole here. The reason uh, we started then doing OCT in all the patients of Ragardi, because the problem is that in case macular hole is not diagnosed, patient uh, may start blaming the surgery itself. And hence the, shall we stop? Come, come, come. Can't afford to sit there. So only two, three points, two, three videos I'll show, Malika. Niche koi nahi hoga, niche. Sare upar aage. Sare upar aage. So uh, I'm showing this two, three videos only, Malika. This was one patient of Bullas Hardy where uh, I had not diagnosed uh, because I had shown, seen two, three HSTs. So macular hole was diagnosed on the table. So trouble with me was that, uh, you know, patient will start uh, criticizing me that I have created his macular hole. So, and this patient, after this patient, I've started doing OCT in all patients of RD also now. So uh, in this patient, uh, the routine surgery was done. Only thing is I, I, I prefer to peel ILM in a flat macular rather than in a detached retina. So I will, uh, you know, inject uh, PFCL, flatten the macula, and then uh, inject this uh, dye. BBG and under the weight of PFCL, once this uh, you know liquid has been drained out from the peripheral break or, or, the, or the fluid is shifted in the periphery, I will uh, you know take this uh, direct pinch and peel technique. And in this patient, uh, we, we, we peeled the ILM, we didn't create any flap. You see this uh, because this the behavior of the ILM in this patient is different because under the weight of PFCL, it will roll on, it will scroll like this. But uh, peeling is not difficult in such patients if you do under the PFCL, at least for me, I do not uh, want to pull the retina once I am peeling this uh, ILM. So this was a straightforward patient. This is another patient who had, uh, you know, macular hole and the, and the uh, detachment. So we did this uh, vitrectomy. The difference between that patient, this patient here, here, <coughs> We had done a flap rather than uh, a, a peel. The surgery was more or less similar. Inject PFCL, flatten the posterior pole, which was detached initially. And since uh, I created retinotomy closer to the uh, arcade, because I wanted the fluid to be out, because peripheral breaks I had not diagnosed uh, preoperatively. So and then inject this BBG dye and similar technique uh, direct pinch and peel technique. The whole size was pretty large and the choroid, uh, you know, visibly looked atrophic. And uh, instead of uh, taking it across the macular hole, we left it at the edge, like all of us uh, do, a flap technique. So this was left like this at the end of surgery. And then we tackle the peripheral retina, dead laser. And this 
This was the end result of this patient. This was the pre and post picture of this patient, reasonably satisfactory outcome. The third patient which I wanted to discuss was this high myope, uh, uh, in fact very high myope, uh, more than 25 diopters of uh, myopia. This lady, 55 year old and uh, we started as usual with the PVD induction. And since the vitreous uh, flow, this was so good that I thought uh, we have taken care of the vitreous and it was freely flowing into the mouth of the cutter like you see here. So I thought PVD is complete but uh, in high myopes always re-inject tricot two, three times to show. You see in the periphery, uh, once I was removing this, applied only suction at this time and the whole sheet of shises was still there. The posterior layer was still there. So advocacy is that in high myopes at least uh, for PVD induction, tricot may be required uh, you know, more than once to take care of this last sheet of uh, uh, shises which is uh, coming up. So and this was actually, you know, removed in a all across, started from temporal side, then along the disc and then nasal side. We could lift up the entire sheet of the vitreous, which had to come out, otherwise such surgery would have been a failure and post-operative PVR chances are very, very high in such patients. So in myops, we should be very, very careful. Then did the same procedure, did a retinotomy. The purpose of doing retinotomy is that uh, once I inject PFCL, the posterior pole should be flat and the fluid is drained out from here. The difference here is that the contrast at the posterior pole because of uh, pathological myopia was not very good. So in such patients, uh, you start uh, near the arcade. You lift up the ILM near the arcade only. So we start in a relatively uh, better stained area near the arcade although fovea is far away and then once the edges are identified then the job becomes simpler and never lose this edge sometimes uh, you may lose the because of the poor contrast you may lose this here again because of the high myopes in all these high myopes instead of peeling I will create a flap because the uh, pump function is in any case is not very good so at the post at right at the fovea the contrast is very poor Otherwise, uh, from the periphery, you can lift up this membrane and bring it to the center. So this uh, multi layer flap was created from all across the posterior pole. And then uh, the rest of the surgery was done. This is the pre and post op clinical picture, the posterior pole RD you can see here, and this is the post op picture. Although it may not look good, but ultimately patient gained 6 by 18 uh, vision in this patient. This is the pre-op OCT here and this is the post-op uh, OCT in this same patient. So these were the three uh, videos which I had to share. As I said, now I started doing OCT in all patients of Regardi wherever I am operating to rule out macular hole because I don't want to be blamed myself. And uh, because prognosis and uh, may get affected. And ILM surgery under PFCL I feel is better than uh, in a detached retina. In high myopes, even if you think there is PVD, do inject tricot uh, another time to just to take out this second membrane. And flap may be better in all this high myopes rather than the peeling. Thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Thank you, sir, for very informative videos. Any questions for him? So you said you would do OCT for all your patients uh, for macular hole, which means any patient of Regardi where you have a obvious horseshoe tear and all you will do. See, first, first video I showed, uh, we had two, three horseshoe tears. So we put for surgery because the patient was bullous. So once we started doing vitreotomy, I noticed a macular hole. So, so how uh, easy is it to do the OCT and to interpret it when the posterior pole is kind of bullous? It's not difficult unless, unless uh, you know, macular is not visible. Sometimes with the balloon of the uh, retina, it may not be. But in majority of times, it is, uh, you can make out that there is no macular hole at most. Because I don't want to be blamed because uh, you see double trouble. The possibility is that this patient may not recover 6 by 6 or, you know, 6 by 9 or 12. But uh, if macular is, you know, uh, there's no macular hole, then there's all the possibility. 
So this patient I had difficulty in counseling also this this hole was I had to show him the video also but this hole was there before this surgery. So that is why I have started doing OCT in all patients. Oh. And the second point you made was that you preferred to do ILM peel always under the PFCL because you don't want it to be pulling out the... Yeah, the reason Vishali is that if the retina is uh, moving around and I do ILM, so this retina I am pulling away from the receptors more and more and the distortion may be more. So I want it to be flat, flat and then peel the ILM. So did you ever have a small bubble of PFCL going under the macular hole in any of your patients? Fortunately not, fortunately not, uh, but it can happen unless, uh, you know, because we have to take care of all the traction at least at the posterior pole first. So I think it's also very important that when we are injecting in macular hole, we do it as a single this thing and no, no. fish eggs yeah, because I you are expert, yeah. but then, uh, so you know. Very nice point, very nice point that in such patients, always use a dual bore cannula rather than, uh, you know, using a single this thing. Because with the dual bore, the possibility of fish checking is available. And yes. always start from the nasal side of the disc rather than, uh, you know, reducing over the And in these patients, would you, uh, besides the ILM peel, like you showed the beautiful flap, but in case you decide not to have a flap, you remove the PFCL, do you put your extrusion at the edge of the hole at the end when you are doing fluid gas exchange to make it smaller? Never. You don't do Never. that. Yeah. In that's fact, I used to do it. I used to combine uh, maybe three, four years back. So I used to do with a 25 gauge, uh, you know, this uh, backflush needle. I will not go over it, but just yeah, the at the remain, edge. Yeah, yeah. At the edge, edge or maybe above it. And one, one blob will come and it will settle down. And sometimes, you know, in a recurrent or re, then I will slightly massage it with the help of, uh, so that to bring the uh, edges together. So that sometimes I still do in a large macular hole. So as to approximate these edges with the help of uh, an old diamond duster, not a fresh diamond duster, but an old diamond duster just to approximate the edges. I will not use a backflash needle, I will use a diamond duster to approximate. Thank you. Thank you.